Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making an easy Oreo pie. So let's get started. To make this recipe, you'll need heavy whipping cream, cream cheese, powdered sugar, vanilla, butter, and Oreos. First off, we're making the crust. I'm using a food processor, but if you wanna crush your Oreos in a bag, that works as well. I need a quarter cup of butter that's like 70 grams melted. So we're gonna pop that in the microwave, put a little paper on top, and hope it doesn't explode. My butter is melted and it did not explode. So now we're gonna break open those Oreos. I want 24 Oreos. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's 16 in the sleeve, but I don't know if that's always 16 or if it changes. So I don't wanna like give you any false information. 17, 18, 19, 20, one, two, three, four. And I'm adding a fifth one in. We're gonna pulse this up until it's nice and fine. You could put this in a bowl and uh, mix the butter in. I'm just gonna put this in the food processor here, like this. This recipe is like almost too good to be true. Just because there's no baking, there's only like five or six ingredients and it is so delicious. You know Oreos mixed with whipped cream or mixed with cream cheese is magic. So just putting that out there. Just combine that butter with your Oreo bits here. All that butter out. It'll be like a wet, sandy mixture. It's not gonna be a solid. One thing you wanna be careful of is getting the pie out after everything's done. A little bit of baking spray will just ease that along. So you can add that in, that's an optional step. Now I'm gonna add all this crumbly, delicious chocolate sandwich cookie mixture into my nine inch pie pan. Spread it out into an even layer. Hands work really well for this. And up to the sides. This does not have to be perfect. It's like, it's a total no stress recipe. All it has to do is taste delicious and it would taste delicious if you dumped it straight into your mouth. <laughs> so I'm using a little measuring cup. This one is actually angled, so it's really nice. It's like a perfect angle for the pie dish. To have a less crumbly pie crust, you can use your index finger and just press down as you press towards the edge. And that way that top won't have so many flyaway pieces. And if you've made cookie pie crusts, you know what I'm talking about. Finishing this off with a glass just because I wanted it to be really pressed in. The nice thing about using chocolate sandwich cookies for this is the, the Oreo, like the middle part, really adds a lot of binding agents. So it holds this pie crust together really well. My son George is in the other room, if you can hear him. He's like giving everyone a speech on his city he made out of train tracks and how everything works. It's very cute. Okay, this goes into the freezer for at least 30 minutes, but if you're staging this out, you could do this days or even a week ahead of time. You might just wanna cover it up if it's gonna be overnight. Our pie, of course, has Oreos in it too. I don't want you to crush them up into tiny little pieces like we did for the crust though. That would just be like a mush. You wanna have larger pieces and the easiest way to do that is just break them up in your hands or let's give them like a smash, they'll fall apart. All you want are bigger pieces like this, and that way your pie will have a little bit of a crunch and texture to it, and it'll have a lot of visual interest. You have like white with black, it'll look really nice, instead of just being totally gray, which is what happens when you crush them. There we go. This is really fun for kids to help with too, but if they do, make sure you get extra Oreos because they'll be snacking on them. <laughs> okay, that was very satisfying. I'm setting this aside. Now we're gonna make the filling. Our Oreo pie is light and creamy because there's a lot of whipped cream in the base. So we want one cup or 240 ml. It should be nice and cold. You could use a stand mixer for this, but a hand mixer works just as well. I'm gonna mix this up on high for about three minutes until I have nice stiff peaks, but before it turns into butter. When you make whipped cream, it's a good idea to start off on a low speed and work your way up to high. That's how you get the nicest whip. And in case you're wondering, the sugar is coming later in the recipe. Right now, we just want the whipped cream whipped by itself. Okay, that was right to the edge. But here, the stiffer the better because whipped cream is so delicious and amazing, but when it's soft, it's hard to get like pieces of a pie that really cut and don't droop. We don't want that. Room temperature cream cheese, we're gonna mix this up and just get it nice and worked over. We don't want any lumps of just pure cream cheese in this pie. That would not be as delicious. And for this recipe, you should use a full fat cream cheese. The light cream cheese will again not help the pie set as well. Cream this cream cheese up. Using the same beaters is totally fine because we're gonna add the whipped cream in later anyways. And it's also nice to work some air into the cream cheese so it mixes better with everything else and you have a light, creamy Oreo pie. <laughs> 
I got this at an antique store. It's a set of um, old measuring cups, but one of them is a three quarter cup measuring cup, which comes in handy for almost every single recipe. To the cream cheese, I'm adding three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar. If you used granulated sugar, it would be gritty, so the powdered sugar is really a must here. We're also adding one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract, and I just want to stress for this, use real vanilla, it makes a big difference in the pie. Mix this in, you want it really completely homogenous. You can see the texture totally changes and it just becomes nice and creamy, almost like a cream cheese frosting. Now we're gonna fold in the whipped cream. Whipped cream and cream cheese is a match made in heaven, in case you didn't know. So if you wanna make this pie, but with a different flavor, this could be a Biscoff cookie pie, like a butter cookie pie. Like there's so many different cookies you could add to this and it would be delicious. You can let me know in the comments what you would make this pie if it wasn't Oreo. Uh, I'm just gonna make a couple like smaller crumbles. A couple of them are too big. Now we're gonna fold in the whipped cream and fold in the Oreos all together. They'll mix super fast. And that's one of the reasons that we made stiff whipped cream and really soft cream cheese so they mix together well. Just mix together until you don't see any big streaks of white, which is the whipped cream, or off-white, which is the uh, cream cheese with the vanilla. This looks great. I'm gonna grab my pie crust from the freezer where it's been hanging out and fill it up. My pie crust is nice and firm. Spoon your mixture in or just plop it out. One of the nice things about using the Oreos is they give you a lot of structure in the pie. Even though the filling is so soft and luscious, the Oreos are holding it together. Right now I'm using a little spatula just to smooth this out. It'll taste the same either way, but it's nice if it looks pretty too. And we're gonna add more decoration onto this. This is ready to go into the fridge to set up completely. You want at least three hours. Once your pie is just about set, you're gonna make an easy whipped cream for the dollops, about a cup of cold heavy cream, a tablespoon or so of sugar, and a dash of vanilla. Mix it up until it is at a stiff peak, and then we're ready to pipe. Finish your pie off with some beautiful dollops of whipped cream. I have mine with an 846 tip, and I just want big, delicious, creamy dollops. You can give your piping bag a little swirl or a wiggle. Then we have one final touch to add. If you wanted, you could totally zigzag fudge or chocolate ganache on top, but that's like going to the decadent, amazing place. It's up to you. Okay, we're gonna add just a little sprinkle of crushed Oreos on top of our dollops for some more texture and a little visual interest. Let's cut this open and give it a taste. That is some creamy, crunchy amazingness. It is so easy and there was no baking involved. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe and if you like this video, check out my no-bake playlist.